because you don't read the Quran. Maybe you don't picture because you read and you don't understand. Maybe you don't picture because you understand the minimum knowledge, because you got it in your language, in English, in French, in Bengali, and, and it depends on the guy who took the knowledge and how he conveyed to you. Did he convey it good? Did he convey it in a rich way or in a very poor way? Of course, he looked he look like a great scholar to you because you have no one but him. All right? Like may, maybe many people look at me as a great scholar. Why am I not? I am not more than a drop in the ocean next to my teacher in Egypt. Drop in the ocean. Nothing. But because you find no one but me, so you think I'm a big shot. Why I'm not a big shot? I'm not. I'm just a conveyor to a drop of his huge knowledge. My shaykh or my shiur. Alhamdulillah, Allah, give me a chance to see the faces of those people. Just the face. If you look at the face of your teacher, this is a great reward. If you look at the face of your father, that's a great reward. The face of your mother, of course, if they were Muslim. Great reward. The face, if you look in the Quran while you don't understand the letter, that's a great reward. If you keep looking at the Kaaba in Masjid Al Haram, if you keep looking at the Kaaba, if you make Umrah, or you're visiting, or whatever, or you make Hajj, and you keep looking, you just keep looking at the Kaaba, you get collect great rewards. So, it is very important to you, it's very important to you, brothers, to study the Quran. If you have no facilities, no access to the computer, no car to drive to a city to buy books, a good transfer, if you don't have money, you can't buy. We have a library here, and I have a special books inside because I don't want to lose any volume of them. So you may, you may borrow one of them while you sit in the magic and you give it to me back before you go. So you confirm the knowledge you hear from me, you hear from Sheikh Majd, you hear from Sheikh Jawad, you hear from anyone else, you confirm. You need to confirm, you need to be so sure, you need to trust your knowledge. So if you trust the knowledge, you will trust the Quran, you will trust the Prophet Wasallam. If you trust the Prophet, automatically you get the trust of Allah. Paradise is guaranteed, will be guaranteed. But if you commit Hajr day and night, is this will save you from the hand of Allah? No. If the FBI come now and say, hey, you come with us, can you take, can you save me from this from their hand? Unless there is no uh, uh, crime I committed or whatever, they could improve it, they may set you free. Fine. But if you, if there is a crime, can you take them out of their hand? No. And maybe if you have connection, communications, whatever, they set you free. And they make a deal with you. And they said, you drop your citizenship and leave the country. Of course, you're happy to be free. You drop 10 times the citizenship to leave. All right? But now, if uh, Allah will get you, and he said you are guilty, who can take you out of his hand? Who can appeal? Hmm? No Supreme Court. He is a Supreme Court. He is a Supreme Judge. His speech is final. So what you was talking about last week, Shafa'a of the Prophet Wasallam, if it is final, Allah may accept his intercession may not. Allah said in Surah al Najm, Surah of the Star, He said, How plenty are the numbers of the angels which they try to intercede for, for someone, and Allah doesn't accept. 
You know why Allah doesn't accept? Because Allah knows the hidden issue of you. Angels, they don't. Angels, they see you in a white dress, big beard, short dress, always have the bead, the beads in your hand, back and forth to the masjid. Angel doesn't know about your secrets, about your niyyah. But Almighty Allah knows the niyyah. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said. It will come a time after the resurrection of everybody. People, I know them from my nation. I know them by their signs. He meant the sign of wudu. Because when you come out, wudu will shine. The face will shine. The arms will shine till over the elbow. You look at your arm, it will shine. <laughs> yes, it will. If the Prophet said so in an authentic hadith, Correct hadith, no single doubt. He said, all the parts of wudu will shine. So you will see the Prophet far away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, next to his well. The cups, the mugs, all around the edge of the well, from gold and silver and crystals. And he hand over water to the people to drink. Him, Umar, Abu Bakr, they hand over the water for people. No more thirsty. If you have one drop, no more thirsty forever. But you try to approach, the angel will push you back. He will scream. My nation, I know them. They said you don't know what they did after you left. Long pants. Oh man, you crazy. All time, every time you say long pants, long pants, what is the problem with your long pants? It's a very important issue. Very, very important issue. You know what's the importance of that? The order of the Prophet. He said, don't. And you want to do it. And the, and the devil say you, to you, do it. Whom you, you love more. Whom you owe his, the whole of your life. To whom? To the Prophet or to the devil. Prophet said, don't make your pant long. Never below the ankle. And the devil said, forget about him. He's a crazy guy. It's not a big issue. If it is not a big issue. If you're sick in the hospital, God forbid. You made a surgery, heart open open heart surgery, whatever. And you can even lift your head. And someone enter your room to visit you. Hi, brother, how are you? How, was you? how do you feel? You can't even respond. You look at him and you can't even speak. But you know who's he. Do you think if you saw some, some dirt of, on his glasses, you will tell him, Oh, brother, please clean your eyeglasses. You will say that? Is this your concern? Is this your concern? Because it's nothing. Look what Umar did. Radiallahu anhu arda. He was, he'd been stabbed seven times with a double-end knife. One hand in the middle, knife from here, knife from there. He stabbed him seven times. Abu Lu'lu'a. Till he shred his body. And he's still in the Qibla leading the Salah of Fajr of Jumu'ah. He didn't leave. He didn't scream. He didn't turn around. Um, what if a mosquito pinch you? Why did you make a Salah <laughs> in Egypt? <coughs> if you go to Egypt in, in winter time or summer time. So, the masjid is full of mosquitoes, full of mosquitoes. And you can't, you are helpless to stop them from entering. So you find the Imam like that. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmuddin. He can't.